Hey, welcome to White Crow Roping, episode 38. I know I'm at least a week late in making this video, but better late than never. I'll get back in the swing of it now. So, about two and a half weeks ago, I went to a 15 on 15 rope round up in Clinton, Arkansas at the 2G Ranch. Pretty cool roping, but they had some super, super strong cattle and uh, my poor old gray horse got kind of tired after seven or eight runs I mean they were they were real fast I mean I think in 220, 225 runs in that whole roping there might have been three or four that got out clean on the barrier and, and caught their steer so some idea of how fast they were but I got a little bit frustrated because my black horse shines in that situation. He's real fast and athletic, a little more so than my gray horse. And I couldn't ride him because I hadn't been, hadn't been getting to practice and rope every day like he kind of needs it in order to maintain his composure and act like a civilized horse. So, <clears throat> it's kind of bum trying to figure out what to do because there's three ropings in the series and I, I, wanted, I wanted my black horse ready for the next one. But nowhere to rope with the weather and wet everywhere and, and so I, I'm not going to lie, I got a little discouraged about it. You feel like you're beating your head against a wall sometimes and the next day I went got got a cheeseburger at Chili's and drank a beer and I was thinking about it and I thought I know how to ride him up I'm, and I'm just giving myself an excuse not to put the work in so I mean I thought went through my head it's time to cowboy up and and figure this horse out and go fight him at home every day for a while and and, and just make him work because generally if you know if you haven't if I haven't run steers on him in two or three weeks that sucker is gonna if he's not if he doesn't buck he's gonna act real real shitty for first few runs and you know where I don't want to take him to a roping so what I did was was that afternoon I went home and 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 act like I was backing in a box out in the out in the back pasture. Made him stand square with his head square and then started like I was after a steer and went all out. And I, I mean I opened him up as as hard as he would go and went back and did it did it about three or four more times and boy he got blown up like and he didn't buck but man he was then it took me about an hour fighting him and spinning around and, and make it to make him go back and stand there with his head forward and I thought back to Arizona when I when shotgun helped me with him and he was doing so good when you know if he even moved his head just I'd pop him back and and we'd go around and around and around again and walk forward and I'd you know like I was scoring steers I just instead of you know I'm standing out here in the open but I kept backing him up in the same spot like we're gonna gonna run and it was a knockdown fight for about two hours, and then I did the same thing the next day and the next day, and he got a little better and he got a little better. And I, for about a week and a half, I uh, I rode him like that. And funny, I met the guy that used to own him up in in a at that music festival I went to in uh, at Madison Stone in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, a few weeks before that, and he. Uh, he said, you know, that horse, I asked him about him, you know, best way to, to get along with him. He said, well, you just have to win the fight every time. And I've shooed some, some of the rankest race horses. I'll, I mean, I'll stand up next to anybody and, and put a lip chain on one and, and get, get shoes nailed on one without drugs. That used to be my specialty, <laughs> if anything was. So, uh, I mean, I know how to apply pressure and release on the ground, but this one, this horse has tested me in a way that 
you know, I think I was being too hard on them or being counterproductive. But over the period of a week and a half, I I got him. I mean, he was loping around in my hand so soft and, you know, turn his head in and out and spin around back up. And I made him, I did a lot of scoring, you know, back him up like we're going to run all out. And then I'd walk him forward. I mean, just like you would if I was roping steers. But I didn't get to rope any until the Thursday, well, I'd say it was about a week, week and a half later. And I took them to an indoor pen. They have once a week. Sometimes they have a practice. And so here here goes. And I, I didn't know how he'd be. I thought he was going to be good. And I was hoping all my work would pay off. And, man, I'll tell you, it paid off so good. That horse was softer and acted better, and I roped better on him. I mean, it was it blew my mind how good that's how good old beaver at work that day and it made me so happy I mean I was you get that from time to time when you accomplish some small goal or some small or even large thing this wasn't that big but to me I just had that joyful feeling all night I was so happy for and then I really like you know sometimes a horse that that uh, is shitty all the time and you get to you just don't like them and aggravating to be around and all of a sudden I started to really love that horse (laughs) and I took him to that roping the next week and roping the same cattle still extremely fresh and he worked good all night long I mean there's it wasn't exactly as good because I think my my heart rate got up a little bit being there's money on the line and they call your name and loudspeaker and that's one thing that I'll get better at is you know maintaining my composure under pressure and all that time I've been riding him and I wasn't roping the sled as much as I could so I kind of screwed it up I mean I turned a bunch of steers and missed some that I should not have missed had a few enough heathers missed that if they'd all caught then uh I'd have been right there at the top of it I don't know that I would have won for sure but it made me happy to, to uh, you know, realize where I was kind of shirking, where I, I was letting that horse get to me, and then work at it for so long, and then have that result. It felt like a, a minor victory for me. And course not winning that roping and you know several steers where I that I either split the horns on or I should have turned was frustrating too and so I'm trying to think of who I could call you know where could I go to to practice a bunch before the next roping which is next Tuesday as a matter of fact and had some ideas that you know didn't didn't really work out but I I realized I could I thought of James Martinez over there in Wichita Falls. I said, man, I bet I could go and pay him for a half-day lesson, and then maybe maybe he let me practice with him for a couple days. So as soon as I did that, and the next time I logged on to Facebook, he was having a free clinic, advertising a free clinic this coming Saturday. So I thought, well, maybe that's like it's serendipitous that I just thought of it. So I called him up, and I'm going down Wednesday night or Thursday, and I'm going to go. get a lesson from James and and hopefully do a little practice and he's got he's going to have a uh, little jackpot jackpot at his new the new place he leased for his his new training facility on Saturday so I'll rope in that and maybe come back Sunday and I just I'm looking forward to it and and pray that I can get the most out of it and come back refreshed and ready to do my very best at the next the next Tuesday at the rope around he's giving away a buckle and a bunch of other prizes and I'd really like to do my put in my best effort and Lord willing win a buckle finally if if it comes to that and if not just do do as well as I can and, and prove to myself that I'm making as much progress as it feels like so thanks for watching this long update I'm 
I've got some good ideas for videos coming up soon, so I'll I'll be back at it with I'll be back at it sooner rather than later. So thanks again and please share this video if you like what I'm doing here and if not t tell me what I could do better in the comments or send me an email at or just follow me at White Crow Outlaws on Instagram and send me a message. Thanks again.